is released today. And this is a cause for celebration. So I have a, a mug of hot cocoa here to do a toast to the release of Billy Braveheart. It's cold here. I live in the mountain. It was snowing this morning. So here's to you and to Billy Braveheart. And sorry about the noise. It's my dog who got all excited about my husband doing something downstairs. But here we are. Let me tell you a little bit about me. I, I was born an animal lover. I can't remember ever a time where I didn't fall in love with an animal. It's just in every cell in my body. And when I was a kid, my mother would take us berry picking and I, I was not very good at picking wild strawberries or blueberries or raspberries, but I had this gift to find little animals that were injured or orphaned and to take them home instead of a basket of strawberries. It drove my mother nuts. So I brought home a baby skunk, a baby duck, um, what else did I buy? Some mice, all kinds of things, chipmunks, lots of chipmunks. And this brought us eventually, my husband and I, when I became an adult, uh, to want to live on a farm. And the story of Billy takes place in an old farmhouse that was at the time almost a hundred years old. I'm also a dentist and during my career, I was a storyteller. I used storytelling to redirect the attention of young children who were afraid of what I was doing in their mouth. So I told story about all kinds of things, including the story about the mouse who lived in my house, which made me feel like Dr. Zeus. And eventually, after saying it a number of times, it dawned on me that maybe I should write this story because it's very, very unique. There were some questions that came earlier and I'd like to address some of them. Uh, let me see. Here's one from Jack. How many animals have I had in my life? Oh my. I don't know. I've had lots of animals. I've had dogs, horses, chicken, ducks, cats, mice, more than one. What else have I had? I've had a rat. I've had raccoons. I've had all kinds of animals. I must have, in the course of my life, more than a hundred animals easily. Uh, here's another question. What's my favorite book? Hmm. My, you know what? My very favorite book and the book that really got me reading, that, that transformed me into a reader is Black Beauty. I love that book. And I had a copy until not that long ago. I gave that copy away to a friend of mine who needed to have it. So I don't have the copy of that book anymore. So the Black Beauty, by far my very favorite book. The last time I read it again, which was recently, just before I gave it away, it still brought tears to my eyes. Love, love Black Beauty. Uh, let me see. Oh, a uh, question from Lynn. Is Billy Braveheart the beginning of a series? Mm, good question. I don't know, but certainly during the years I lived on the farm, there were many other animals and some of them are actually introduced in Billy Braveheart. The cat that's there at the beginning of the story, uh, his name was Cowboy. I could tell the story about him and many other cats. The, the cats, there was also Redford and Bogart and who else? There was Pebbles. 
So I could tell stories about the cats at the old farm. There were many dogs. And again, in the book, Billy Braveheart, there's Oliver and Bandit that are introduced. And there were many other dogs. There were horses there. And as I mentioned earlier, there were chicken and ducks and raccoons for a while. So I, I don't know, honestly, I, I've, I have folders of notes about these other animals, but honestly, I have not started writing any of these other potential stories about the other animals who lived on that same old farm during the time Billy was alive. Okay, here's another question here. How did I get the idea to write Billy Braveheart? Well, as I said earlier, it has to do with the fact that um, Billy was there. He lived in my kitchen for four and a half years and the story was pretty unique. But when I decided to really write about Billy's story, then I had to do research to fill in the blanks because all I really knew about Billy was the time he was living in my kitchen. I didn't really know what was happening to him while he was still living outside of my house or when he escaped and he was in my basement or somewhere else in my house. So I had to do research and and find out what were the, the traits of a deer mouse and what they ate, what they looked for, how they made their nests and stuff like that. So there was a lot of research involved in um, writing uh, Billy Braveheart and, and that was fun to do. I, I enjoy doing research. If anything, that's more fun than the actual writing of the, of the book. But I must say, I've also enjoyed writing it. It's quite an adventure to write a book. Let me see, whoops, here's another, oh, here's another one that came. What kind of a dog is Oliver? And this is a question that came from John. Oliver was a Scotch Collie, like Lassie. And he was a, a fine, fine dog. He was a gentle, beautiful, beautiful dog. I loved Oliver. Um, Oh, this is a question from Barb. How long did it take from inspiration to publishing? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> that, that's a good question. The inspiration came and I wrote the story. And I also hired a fine, fine young man whose name is Sam Hamilton to do the illustrations for the story. And when everything was done, which took about a year, I decided that it wasn't good enough. So I put everything on the back boiler and didn't do anything with it for quite a few years. And then um, it came back and it resurfaced and did a series of editings. And um, at, after doing the edits, I realized that the cover was not quite what I wanted for the book anymore. And I had lost track of Sam Hamilton, unfortunately. So Sam, if you're anywhere online, I want to hear back from you. I'd love to reconnect with you. Um, so uh, we hired, with the help of my publisher, Mascot Books, we hired another illustrator to create the cover of Billy Braveheart. So to answer John's question, uh, or Barb's question, um, how long from the inspiration to the publishing, it was about two years altogether. Yeah, that takes a while. Uh, what else do we have here? Any other question? You can use the chat box to ask any questions you may have. And if not, if some questions come later, I can always answer them later. What I would like to do now is to, first of all, no, I'm gonna read a piece of Billy first and then we'll talk about some other parts of the book. This part is when Billy is already living in my kitchen. But he's still not 100% sure about me as a potential friend. Friendship is sometimes a tricky thing, especially when you're a mouse. Billy hesitates. 
having never accepted food from a human hand before, Jeanne frightens him immensely. But the peanut aroma emanating from the warm toasted bread pulls him by the nostrils in small mystified steps. When he gets to the morsel, he takes a good hold of it with his teeth and jerks it away from Jen. He backs up with the treasure, never breaking eye contact with her. When he reaches the center of the cage, he relaxes a bit and hops on the edge of his food dish where he perches himself to eat. Holding the morsel in his forepaws, he proceeds to lick the peanut butter before biting it into the toasted bread. Thus, Billy begins a new set of routines. He starts coming out of his boot every morning at breakfast and every night at dinner time to share mouse-sized portion of the food Jeanne and Franz prepare for themselves, grapes, lettuce, and even chicken. He tries everything, his weakness, peanuts, and peanut butter. He indulges in one or the other every day. Jeanne, who buys the peanuts at the natural food store in town, loves to watch Billy crack the pod open with his teeth. He extracts one seed with his forepaws, skins it, halves it, and finally holding the seed with its concave side up, eats it. Always the same routine. Jeanne samples Billy's peanuts now and then, and then with increasing frequency. frequency. She even joins Billy on peanut binges and often invites friends to join the party. The bags of peanuts she brings back from the store get a little bit bigger every week. A new addiction for Billy's human companions, an established one for Billy. As the weeks go by, Jeanne notices that Billy appears to be nervous every Sunday during the cleaning of the cage. Initially, she dismisses the observation, blaming the dogs for the apparent tension. But then she observes that Billy is particularly upset when she reaches to grab the boot, packed with a ball of finely shredded tissue in the heel and seeds in the toe, always neat and tidy. One day, as she reaches for the boot, she shifts her gaze to Billy, who is drumming his forepaws on the table. She backs away, he stops. She reaches again, he starts drumming again. He's warning me not to touch his home. She had been bitten by him before, always when reaching for the boot. She finds herself wondering now if she had been oblivious to his warnings all along. So she backs off completely and decides to stop emptying the content of the boot from now on. With summer comes a new measure of freedom. Billy, now more relaxed, is now often allowed out of his cage and in the evening during dinner preparation. He feels at ease with Jen, whom he trusts a little bit more every day. He likes to listen to her voice, especially when she addresses him, which she now does almost every day. When he hears her coming into the kitchen, he comes out of his boot and hops to the edge of the cage. Then he grabs a hole of the two bars with his forepaws and sticks his nose between the bars. Jeanne reads this display as a request for freedom, and she obliges Billy with increasing frequency. That's all I'm going to read for now, but I want to share a photo of Billy. The, actually, the only photo I have of Billy, and I'd like to show you that photo together with an illustration, the illustration of the book. Let me show you. Look at this. So in this I have on a shelf in my office. So this is Billy. This is a real Billy. And this is the illustration that Sean D'Souza did for me. And don't they look very much alike? Look at that. Look at this. 
really brave heart. So I still have Billy in my office. I see him every day. And, oh, I have to show you this too. Look, in the book, when you read it, you will see that one of the trips I take to Montreal, I go shopping with my mother and it's during a period where Billy has gone missing. And my mother bought me this mouse to replace Billy. Isn't she cute? <laughs> All right, so what else can we do together? Any other questions? I don't see any other questions coming in right now. And ah, somebody asked, where can I buy the book? Well, the book is available on amazon.com. So you know how to find that. Just uh, when you go to Amazon, just ask for either Billy Braveheart or my name, Marielle Parizeau, the author, and it should direct you directly to the page for Billy Braveheart. You can also get it at Barnes and Nobles or Mascot Books, mascotbooks.com, barnesandnobles.com. Amazon.com. These are all three places that where Billy Braveheart is currently available since today. Celebration. Cheers with my hot cocoa, which is not very hot anymore. And if you are local, if you happen to be in the greater Salt Lake City area, the book is now available at the King's English bookstore, downtown Salt Lake City. And it's also available at Hideaway Books in both locations. They have a store at American Fork and at Spanish Fork. Both locations have a few copies of the book. And I'd like you to meet my friend here. Come on. This is Ollie. <laughs> this is Ollie. She's young. She's only two years old. She never met Billy. But I think she would have been just like Oliver in the book. She would have been a friend to Billy and some kind of a protector. Right, Holly? Yeah. 